Okay, thank you, Vincenzo. Thank you, the API Days organization, for inviting me to speak at this amazing event. Uh, well, I'm Eric. I'm the CTO and co-founder at Hubtype. And today, I'm going to talk about the What's a Business API. Like, what kind of things you can build with it? Uh, also, what are the, its limitations and the technical challenge? Uh, but before I jump into it, I want to tell you a little bit uh, about why should you care. So uh, you can see here the evolution of different uh, text communication channels over the last decades. And it might come as a surprise that channels like email or SMS have been stagnant or even declining over the last decade. And the reason is very simple. In 2008, there's a new channel that appears, and it's been, going, it's been growing exponentially ever since. And this is messaging, and here I'm uh, combining all the mobile messaging apps, uh, like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, all of those. So the situation right now is that uh, consumers are adopting all these new channels like crazy, and uh, companies are being left behind. So there's many reasons of this uh, asymmetry, but one of the main ones is the lack of uh, official APIs for these messaging platforms. But luckily, this is... Uh, changing pretty fast. Uh, messaging apps like WhatsApp are opening their platforms to, to developers. And uh, talking about WhatsApp, it's uh, the main uh, messaging platform all over the world. It's the, it's the leader. They have 1.5 billion uh, users that actively use the platform every month to talk to friends, family, and soon to, to businesses. So for companies and developers, this is uh, obviously a big deal, like being able to reach uh, such a great audience. So if you want to start, how you, how you can do it, how you get started? Well, uh, you probably know that WhatsApp launched their private beta uh, last year, in August 2018. And uh, they're still in beta. So the access, it means that the access is still very limited. And you can try to request access directly to WhatsApp, but good luck with that. I mean, there's, I don't know anyone that has uh, got uh, the early access through WhatsApp directly. So what they are doing is building a network of uh, what they call official solution providers, which is a selected group of uh, 50 companies today uh, around the world. Uh, these companies usually build APIs or services or products on top of messaging platforms. So the way it works is uh, usually apply through one of those. And you provide information about your business, like, I don't know, what's your market, your languages, uh, what kind of uses, uh, use case you want to provide, uh, more on this later. And what's your expected volume, like how many millions of messages per month you expect to send through WhatsApp. And then we share this information with the WhatsApp team, the one that is, uh, you know, looking at every request one by one manually and uh, accepting or rejecting every use case. So it typically takes two weeks for them to uh, accept a company in the private beta. And everything is very manual still. So you will see throughout the presentation, there are many steps, many processes that are still very manual, which is cumbersome. But it's worth it, really. Uh, Yeah, there are two ways uh, to set up a business presence in uh, WhatsApp. And this usually causes some confusion, so that's why I want to talk about it. One is the uh, WhatsApp business app, which is available for Android and iOS. And this is for uh, small and local businesses in mind. So it's like a supercharged uh, WhatsApp app that allows you to send some automatic reply replies and little more, really. So not very interesting for developers. And there's the other one, the WhatsApp Business API, uh, with big companies and global brands in mind. And this is the focus of, of my talk today. So there are two use cases that you can use with the WhatsApp Business API. One of them is customer support, and the other is notifications. And the way to distinguish between these two, uh, so for WhatsApp, when you reply to a message, uh, that you get from a user within 24 hours, this is considered a customer support message. 
If you, send, uh, if you reply after 24 hours, or you initiate the conversation as a company, that is considered a notification. So the funny thing here is that from a technical point of view, there's no difference between the two. So it's just a call to the same API endpoint, so send message to this user. But the business implications behind this are very different. Starting with uh, you have to pay for notifications, and customer support messages are completely free. So this is the main, the main difference, but there are many others, as I'll tell you now. OK, so customer support. Um, besides being free to use, um, it allows you to reply with any kind of media. So you can use images, videos, uh, location, whatever you want. And they allow you to use uh, humans or machines to respond to the users. And this is something that has changed over the last couple of months, because before, they only uh, allowed uh, manual responses. And this is something you can understand, because uh, from the point of view of WhatsApp, they want to protect the user and protect the, their user experience. And at Facebook, they had uh, this experience in 2016 with uh, Facebook Messenger bots where they open up the API to everyone, and a lot of uh, shitty bots were created, a lot of poor experiences. Uh, I have to admit that I created some of them, so I'm not really proud about it. But anyway, uh, forcing human uh, interaction was a way to you know, make sure that the user would end up with a good experience and would keep using WhatsApp for interacting with their brands. Um, but at the same time, mm, well, anyway. So yeah, the, the way it works is typically, imagine, um, I don't know, an e-commerce site. OK, you buy a product, then they send you uh, an email um, that says, hey, you can contact us on WhatsApp for any question. And they can use a WhatsApp deep link, like the one you see here. So when a user clicks on wa.me slash number, it opens the native WhatsApp app in their phone with your contact already there, ready to talk. So the user could ask anything like, hey, when will my order arrive? And then you can use uh, bots or NLP to try to answer to this question, like, hey, your, uh, your product will arrive tomorrow between 4 and 6 PM. And the nice thing about bots is that they provide instant answers 24-7 at scale. So this kind of service is impossible to achieve with human agents. Uh, so this is the good part. The bad part is that, obviously, they cannot answer all the questions. But this really is not such a big deal, because usually in contact centers, you have this Pareto law, where 20% uh, of the most common questions are account for 80% of the traffic. So in an e-commerce e site, uh, typical questions are, uh, where's my order? I want to return an order, et cetera. So if you can automate only this 20%, you can go a long way. And then if the user is asking something more complex, like, hey, I won't be uh, at home tomorrow. Can I change my shipping address? Then you can transfer this conversation to a human agent that will respond from their CRMs or, or ticketing tools. OK, notifications. Notifications are a bit more tricky. Um, after 24 hours, uh, WhatsApp don't allow you to send uh, free text. So you cannot send anything you want to the users. They, they uh, make you send what they call mes message templates. So you have to think in advance what kind of messages you want to push to your users. And then you have to submit these messages to their um, business management console, which is in uh, business.facebook.com uh, site. So you supply the text that you want to send, and they will have to review it manually. So again, it also takes two or three days for them to review the content of the messages, and they will approve or reject. And they will typically approve um, notifications that are transactional and that add value to the user. So for example, um, your order has shipped, or your flight has been delayed, this kind of messages. And they will reject, for sure, anything that smells remotely to, I don't know, commercial, promotional, or any kind of spam, which is also natural, because they don't want their platform to become the new email where all of us are used to receive spam, basically, nowadays. 
So they want to protect both the user and, and their platform. Oh, and also, uh, if you want to proactive, proactively send message to users, you need their explicit opt-in. That means that they have to check, like a checkbox in a website or somewhere outside of WhatsApp, uh, that they allow uh, your business to send them notifications. And lastly, this is the way WhatsApp makes money. So you have to pay for every template message that you send. And uh, I'm not sharing the prices here, but they are public on their website, so you can go look at it. It usually it depends on the uh, country of the recipient of this message. So it, the prices uh, can vary a lot between, uh, I don't know, India and the US. And they also have discounts uh, per volume. So you're sending massive amounts of uh, notifications. They will give you special prices. So please go, go check it out. Oh, yes. And uh, there's another thing that a lot of customers complain, and is that the pricing of these uh, notifications is usually two or three times higher than sending SMS. So all the customers are, what the hell? I'm already you know, sending SMS and paying for that. Why would I switch to WhatsApp if it's much more expensive? But the truth is that the open rate and the engagement rate of WhatsApp messages is way much higher than SMS. So the return of investment, it's, it's really worth it. OK, so I've been talking about the use cases that they allow. And they also have a list of uh, explicit list of things that they don't allow, some of which you might expect, like uh, selling drugs or uh, you know, dealing with guns, these kind of things. Others like um, political parties, you also could expect after all the Cambridge Analytica scandal. But they are a bit paranoid now, and they, uh, they don't allow anything that, remote, that is remotely linked to governments or or political parties. For example, we got rejected uh, an application for a water supply company that is public, but I don't know. So besides this, there's a lot of uh, gray areas that they don't have official guidelines, and the only way to know if they are approved or not is just, is just trying. OK, more limits. Quality rating. This is uh, another one that is uh, way too complicated, so I'm not going to go into detail here. But the idea is that you have different tires. So on tire one, uh, you can send messages to only 1,000 customers, every 1,000 different users in 24 hours. So when you set up a new WhatsApp number, uh, an official business account, you are in tire one. So you have to spend one week providing uh, good quality responses to those users in order to earn the next uh, tire. And good quality is that the users don't mark you as a spam. So if you are start sending uh, promotional content, probably a lot of users will mark uh, your, your number, your account as a spam. And then your quality rating uh, decreases. So if you are in tire two and you are flagged, you can go back to tire one. So uh, it takes a long time to get to tire three and, and above. And again, look at, uh, at the website. This is official documentation. It's, it's public. So uh, have a look at it if you are more interested. Cool. So what about the technical challenges of uh, deploying WhatsApp uh, API? Uh, most likely, you guys won't have to deal with all this, because uh, you'll probably go through an official um, solution provider, so you have to deal with the API of the provider you choose. But again, again, I think someday WhatsApp will open up to everyone, so this hopefully is still useful to you. Um, have you guys ever used the APIs of other messaging apps, like Telegram, Facebook Messenger? Can you raise your hands? Just to... OK. So if you use those, uh, the WhatsApp API will feel very familiar to you because it's based on the same concept. They also use uh, webhooks to receive inbound uh, messages and stuff like that. So in this way, it's very similar to others. But there's one thing that changes everything and that also makes it completely different, which is the end-to-end -end encryption. So to make sure that WhatsApp and Facebook 
uh, cannot read your, the messages you exchange with your users, they provide you with what they call the WhatsApp client. And this is a software that connects to the WhatsApp servers and uses the, well, their modified version of the Jabber XMPP uh, protocol. And it's responsible for encrypting, decrypting messages, and stuff like that. On top of that, you also need a database to store encryption keys for every pair of users and uh, message queues, all this kind of low-level stuff. And then you also need to deploy the API server. So uh, the guys at WhatsApp provide you with a Docker that is intended for local testing and, and development. You can also use it in production in on-premise um, deployments, but we've never used it because the official produ production deployment is through AWS, uh, by which they provide also an official template to make it easier for you to, to deploy it. Uh, they also have a public uh, Postman collection. Uh, you can go and download and you know, explore the API if you're interested. It's also public here. And this is how the uh, Docker deployment looks like. So I'm not going to go into detail. There's also a lot of documentation online. Um, but you know, someone told me, I don't know if it's true, that uh, WhatsApp, what did here is just uh, take the software that they're using for their Blackberries, uh, package it in a, in a Docker instance with a lot of other stuff, and ship it. So not sure if it's true or not, but Hey, it's working. Uh, but again, uh, don't use this in production. Use this, <laughs> which is the, uh, uh, all the services that uh, the template that they provide uh, deploys on Amazon Web Services. And again, this is for every number that you need to deploy. So every new number, you have to go and deploy all these services. And this is crazy, because uh, only having this online, like with no traffic, so even if n no users talk to you in one month, it still costs $300 at least, just to have it online. Uh, yeah, I hope someday WhatsApp will provide some kind of uh, self-hosted service uh, if you don't care about encryption, so you can use a uh, cheaper option. Oh, there's another way uh, that has been around for ages, uh, which are open source libraries that uh, are built by people that have reverse engineer the WhatsApp protocol, and they tap uh, into their API in an unofficial way. Uh, I don't recommend to use this, and actually I strongly encourage not to use this because uh, you are using the API against their terms and services, and you will get banned for sure. I mean, right now they are banning more than, well, millions of accounts every month. So don't use this. OK, the setup. Let's say uh, we're OK with paying all that, and uh, I want to set up one WhatsApp number. So the first thing is you deploy to AWS all these instances that I've shown you. Then you go to the WhatsApp manager console, which is inside of the uh, business manager in Facebook, and you create a new uh, phone number. This will create a certificate that you're going to use in the next step for the number verification. And also, the number that you put here, it has to be a real number. So you cannot put virtual numbers or invent numbers. It has to be an actual SIM card that is inside a mobile phone, because they will send you an SMS with a code <clears throat> that you need uh, for the number verification. Once the number verification is completed, it's over. I mean, you can take the SIM card and store it, whatever you want. You won't need it anymore. So once you have the number verified, you set up your uh, business information, like your logo for the profile picture and a bunch of other uh, fields. You set up your webhooks for communicating with WhatsApp. And you set up two-factor authentication. That is that if you uh, remove your Amazon Web Service instances and you create a new one somewhere, you will need to enter the pin that you created here. And this is mandatory if you want to uh, do the last step, which is optional, which is the business uh, official account verification. And this is yet another manual verification they do. Uh, you have to create a ticket in Facebook and wait for them to verify. Usually it takes 
three days, something like that. And when they have it, uh, you can have the green check of verified business in, in WhatsApp. And that's it. You can start using the API after these many manual steps. So I know what many of you are thinking. So, OK, they made me pay $300 per month just to have it up and running. Then I have to pay for every uh, template message or notification. Then I cannot, I cannot use it directly, so I have to go through an official provider, which they will have their own fees. Yeah. And I cannot do a lot of stuff, only customer support notifications, and a thousand other limitations. So is that really worth it? I mean, uh, yeah. Believe me that uh, the results that we're having so with some customers are, are really amazing. These are some uh, real numbers for one of our customers, an e-commerce site uh, that launched WhatsApp as a customer support. And only after three months of having this new channel open, they reduced their phone calls by 50%, which is pretty crazy. And the cost per contact on WhatsApp is 80% uh, less than uh, attending a phone call, meaning that their customer support agents are way more productive attending WhatsApp conversations than attending phone calls. So really, I cannot think of any other API that uh, will impact businesses all over the world as profoundly as the WhatsApp API. So for me, the question is not so much uh, whether you should try it or not. So, um, but um, what's your timeline? What's, your, what's the strategy of your company to start uh, messaging your customers on WhatsApp? Because in two years from now, uh, all your competitors will be there, and they will be providing not only a great customer experience, uh, but also enjoying uh, reduction in operational cost. So the time to start thinking about it is today. Thank you. <laughs>